Kapow! Loops and conditionals! Awesome! I know you've all been waiting for this moment. It's finally arrived. All right, sorry. My daughter had to go to uh, the doctor this morning because we were telling, weren't sure what happened. She threw up a whole bunch yesterday and went limp and cold for like two minutes. It's not like the best sign, but um, everything looks fine. Loops and conditionals, remainders, loops, range, conditionals. Uh, so a remainder, and they don't call this modulus for whatever reason in the documentation. It's remainder. Maybe there's a distinction. I think there was when I was reading that. Same thing? All right, they call it remainder. And I kind of like that about Go. Like, why are we calling it modulus? It's the remainder. That's what everybody knows. Let's just call it remainder. The sign if it was all this or something. Yeah, probably. The sign, like positive or negative? Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know you could have negative remainders. I don't have, I have less than two left. So here's uh, here's remainder. And you, an exercise do it. And here's loops. And uh, and that syntax is, sorry, I'll let you look at it for a second. No curly braces, or sorry, no parentheses. And that syntax is uh, init condition post. For init condition post, you could also just do for condition, which is like a while. And you could also just do for, which will be an infinite loop unless you have some sort of a break or condition inside of it. So you could do all of those. And, uh, and so here is uh, short declarations make it easy to declare the index variable right in the loop. The scope of i will only be this loop. So that's the scope of i. And here's this key value range deal that we saw, which is good for an array, slice, string, or map, or channel. And we'll learn about those shortly, some of them. And uh, you could also just say, hey, I just want the key. You don't have to specify value, and that's part of the syntax. And if you just want value, you throw away the key with the underscore. And what the heck is happening here? So that's your init, that's your condition, that's your post. And we have multiple assignment. So i is equal to 0, j is equal to length of a minus 1. And, and in the post, we're also doing a post operation. And, uh, and it's called init condition post because this is the initializer where you initialize some variables. And you have a condition which checks like some condition to see if the loop should continue. And if it's true, right, it needs to evaluate to a bool. And if it's true, the loop keeps going. And then you have a post which after each iteration of the loop, it uh, increments. So here's uh, where we saw multiple assignment again, just to help you remember what was going on there. Because that looked a little bit confusing when I first saw it. I'm like, what is happening there? And this is one instance where we do use semicolons. You want to interject? Nope. All right. So we saw this last semester, switch statements. So we have a switch and a case. And Madi is actually here now. Awesome. Perfect day for you to come. There's no default fall through. So uh, fall through is optional. You don't you know, have to put in any break statements. Uh, you can use a keyword fall through to make it fall through if you want to. And uh, multiple evals. So I've got switch Ginny. And either of those come true, it'll print out one of those. And then uh, cases can be expressions also. right? So here we had a switch and then some expression, right, Ginny, to evaluate. And here we just have a switch and, and the case. And, uh, and so let's see, both of your names start with M. Uh, and my friend's name is Madi. And so down here, I'm looking to see, you know, uh, does the length of my friend's name equal two? No. Does the length, of, or does my friend's name equal Tim? No. Does my friend's name equal Jenny? No. Does my friend's name equal Marcus or Madi? Yes, right? So then it prints out that line. No breaks needed, no default fall through. And uh, you can switch on types. <clears throat> so that's uh, just sort of the way you'd write that. So if you have something that needs to react different ways based upon the type, 
you could write that and you could see that in action there that it's determining int string contact type so this is a struct we'll see in a couple of presentations how to create a struct collection of fields and uh, and then we have strings down here any questions and then conditionals and uh, there's the conditional if straightforward if if else 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 if also so if This is kind of a interesting thing. So you could set up a local variable. It'd be local just to like this uh, statement, these statements right here, and uh, and so you set that up right there at the beginning. And so hey, I'm checking this stuff, and if it returns an error, if error is not nil, so if there is an error, then it's going to run this stuff. So you, you set up that first kind of condition right there, accepts an initialization statement. This is a uh, seem pretty self-evident to me. You don't have to put in an else. Maybe some languages you do. I don't know. Needs no else statements. Good state style in most programming languages. Oh, is it really? Go adjust things like this. So it's considered good style in most programming languages. Daniel said. I don't know if you heard that on the video, but um, uh, you don't need else statements in Go. Uh, it's also kind of interesting if you look at what's happening there in this example from Effective Go, right? We've got error being declared there, and we've got error being declared there again. And that kind of threw me for a loop. I'm like, wait a minute, can I do that? Can I declare a variable, right? Can we assign error twice? And so here's where they say, yes, you can. <laughs> and, uh, and they have rules for where that applies. And so if you read that... Uh, Notice though that error appears in both statements. This duplication is legal. Error is declared by the first statement, but only reassigned in the second. This means that the call to fstat using the existing error variable declared above and, and just gives it a new value. So it's basically saying that's okay. So in a colon equal declaration, a variable v may appear even if it has already been declared, provided this declaration is in the same scope as is the existing declaration. And the corresponding value in the initialization is assigned to v. And there is at least one other variable in the declaration that's being declared anew. So that other variable right there would be D, right? And that's being declared new right there. So you could use error again. The unusual property is pure pragmatism, making it easy to use a single error value. For example, in a long if-else chain, you'll see it used often. So program FizzBuzz from Boot Camp, and then also 3, 5, 6, and 9. And summing, summing the numbers up that are multiples of 3 to 5 below 1,000. So here's the review, just loops, switches, and ifs, and remainder, and then just some of the syntax for you to look at that we already saw. And you got some review questions. Questions? Kind of a different lecture format than last semester.